After months of working on my abstract painting series, I'm now in the final stages. I'm excited to take you along as I put on the finishing touches. Hi there, I'm Janine. I'm an artist and I share my creative journey on this channel. If you've been following me painting the series, then you're probably eager to finally see them finished. This is finally the day where I share the last few tweaks to make them complete. I like to cover areas that I want to remove with my hand or fingers, so I can get an idea of how the painting would look without it. This painting has too many of those dark dots, which makes it look a bit fragmented. I'm also not very happy with this larger dark shape. I think I need to extend the dark area and connect it to the one at the top to make one large dark shape. Then I'm adding some of this warm, rusty Neo Color 2 crayon. I'm finding the white in the center too cool, so I'm warming it up with a pinkish white so it harmonizes better with all the reddish tones. The white area is also looking too textured, so I'm making it more solid at the same time. I'm mixing some gloss medium into this orange color for the large dark shape. I'm making the dark shape even larger by including that top left corner. It was getting a bit too dark though, so I'm lightening it up a little in that corner. And it needed another darker orangey shape, so I'm adding this to the bottom. The colours are still a bit too fragmented, so I want to add more of the light blue. The top right corner was a bit too yellowy green, so that's where I'm covering it with that blue. Again I've added some glazing fluid into it, so it's only a transparent wash. I'm making the centre even lighter and more solid, but I'm using this mop brush, which creates really nice soft edges. I'm trying to blend all the edges, so they blend in with what's already there. Then I'm scratching into the wet paint a little bit, to reveal some of what's underneath. I want to add even more of the light blue, so I'm going over the center with a transparent layer. Then I'm just adding light bits wherever I feel like it needs something a bit lighter. I want to make the light area a little bit less solid than what it is currently, so I'm sanding just a little area to make that shape there a bit bigger. That shape at the top really isn't doing it for me, so I'm covering it with the blue paint completely. Well, not quite completely, because I'm leaving a few little bits shining through. Also, the dark shape in the corner has to go. It feels much more spacious now. Those two dark bits feel a bit too flat, so I'm adding a glaze of pink over the top. Also, that blue bit at the top that used to be just a straight rectangle is still bothering me, so I'm going over it again. Then I'm just lightening and cleaning up a couple of the light areas.
This bottom bit was looking a bit too yellow for me, so again I'm trying to make the colour more similar to the other light areas. I want this large dark shape to be a bit more defined, so I'm adding the pink with one of my spatulas. This pink in the top corner is a bit too bright, so I'm adding a little bit of the darker magenta. The light areas are still looking a bit too bitty, so I'm making them a bit more of a light pinkish colour. I'm always trying to not remove what I've already done completely, so I keep on wiping it a little bit so you can see what's underneath. Making all the light areas more homogeneous makes the whole painting look a lot more spacious. To spice the right side of the painting up a little, I'm adding a glaze of pink. The brush I'm using here is a little bit too small, that's why I'm being quite fiddly with it. to blend it towards the center. This could have probably been a lot easier if I'd used a larger brush. The edge isn't quite as smooth as I'd hoped, so I'm sanding a little bit there to blend it in better. Here again the light areas were quite bitty and had a lot of different shades of light colour. So I'm making the right side of this painting more blue toned. I keep on scratching into it to create a bit of interest. I keep on checking with my hand which areas could do with covering up. Some of these little dark shapes have to go. I'm still trying to keep it fairly light. The blue is getting a little bit too dark. And I'm also trying to blend it towards the center. This orange shape is still not quite right, so I keep on fiddling with it. The orange had gotten a little bit too dull, so I want to add a glaze of a brighter hue. not too happy with the shape of that orange so now that it's dry I'm lightening the edge a little bit so it can blend in a bit better with the rest of the painting. I'm being a bit too careful here with my brush. Even towards the end of the painting stage I still want to try taking risks and not be too careful. But it's quite difficult if you like what's already there. I keep on 
lightening and blending the light areas. Just a back and forth of adding paint and removing it again. I'm adding a little bit of the glazing fluid again so I can create a more transparent layer. Then I want more blue on the right again, so I'm adding more of the blue with the glazing fluid. Sending shivers down your spine It's enough to make you lose your sense Again, I'm messing with the orange shape so it appears smaller. It needs something a little bit more exciting. So I'm adding this scribble with the Neo color. That orange shape is still too dull, so I'm adding quite a bright hue of magenta, but I think it's a bit too much. Also, those little dots I had originally have disappeared, so I'm adding those again. I still can't quite get the orange that I want, so I'm using a Neo colour instead to create a wash. That's not quite enough though, so I'm using this raw umber to make the orange less bright. And then finally I'm going over some of the orange with this light blue. If you like this video, consider subscribing! Just like on the previous panels, I want to homogenise the light areas a bit more. Some of it also feels too dark, so I'm using a slightly lighter colour than what's already there. This little dark bit at the bottom was a bit too distracting. This peninsula of beige at the top here looks a bit weird, so I'm going over with pink to make it part of the dark area. I keep on darkening it so it blends in better with what's already there. I keep on covering bits with my hand that I'm thinking of removing. The dark area at the top still needs some work, so I keep on adding more dark colour. I love the texture in the centre of this painting, but there was just too much of it, so I am covering a lot of it. I keep on lightening the already light areas, till I'm happy with it. Here I want to add a little bit more pink in the bottom to connect it to the large pink area at the top. This light bit here is too distracting so I want to make it smaller and add more dark colour. It's a bit more blue than what was already there so I keep on mixing it till I get about the same colour which is a bit more green. Here I previously covered up a lot of this blue area, but I want to bring some of it back again. I'm using my furniture scraper to remove some of the paint I had put on top. Then I'm adding a wash of the ultramarine. And I think it gave a really nice effect here. I'm adding a tiny bit of yellow to the top here because there wasn't any in that area. This blue bit is a bit too big so I'm making it smaller. 
This bit here I'm making more saturated. Then I add more blue to connect it to the top again. The white scribbles are a bit too dominant still, so I'm going over it with a glaze of the light colour. The shape on the left wasn't quite right yet, so I'm experimenting by making it bigger with a glaze. The large orange on the right is a little bit too foreign, so I'm adding some of the more muted pink over it. I'm also adding some pink here, so it appears in more places. But I want it to be quite subtle, so I'm wiping it again. This bit in the centre is quite an interesting area, but it's too distracting, so I'm going over it with a glaze. I'm still not happy with this area on the left, so I'm covering it up. To make some of it shine through again, I'm dabbing it with a cloth. I keep on adding more of a brownie pink to the orange shape. I'm adding more light colour wherever I think the painting needs a bit more space. I made a completely separate video on working on this painting, but there are a few last tweaks that I want to make. I want to extend this dark shape a bit more, but because it's too solid, I'm adding a swoosh of the light blue on top. I'm also making this area a little bit more subtle by adding a glaze of blue over the top of it. And then I call it finished. I hope you've enjoyed following along as I painted my series. If you want to know when I release the series, then sign up to my newsletter. I put the link in the description below. My newsletter subscribers always get early access before everybody else. The paintings will be available for newsletter subscribers on Thursday the 6th of July and for everyone on Friday the 7th of July. The painting stage is now done, but I still have to do quite a bit to get them ready for selling. I will also share those steps in some upcoming videos. You can follow the whole process of me creating the series, starting from making a mood board, um, creating a color palette and then painting, if you click the playlist I made up here. Thanks and bye guys.